I'm David Ledbetter with the Golf Channel Academy and with me is Dennis Watson. Hello Dennis. David, good to be here again. Today we're going to be discussing the body movement in the swing. You know, if you look at all great sportsmen, or sportswomen for that matter, the way they move their body in all different sports, the, really the body is the key element in creating power and consistency. And we'll see with many amateurs how in actual fact their body doesn't move quite in the right manner. The tendency is certainly because we're holding the club with our hands that we feel we've got to use our hands and arms purely to hit the golf ball and whatever happens to the body happens. But there is more to it than that. You can actually learn to really use your body in the right way. Learn to wind up, learn to coil, just like a pitcher does or a tennis player or any athlete for that matter. Learn to use your body correctly and you'll see a huge difference in what actually takes place. So Dennis, you know, with the golf swing, obviously we work a lot on set up assuming that our posture is good but we really have to learn what actually happens with the torso in other words what we're talking in terms of say from the head down to the feet excluding the arms the hands and the club yeah I agree with that a great deal obviously a lot of body motion being one of the keys to my uh, good play at times is when I get my body in real good sync with my arms right yeah, we're going to have a special guest on the show here today uh, who I'm sure you'll recognize who will show you wonderful body movement as well and if you can learn to get the body movement, you know, if what we work on with even beginners is learning to use their body correctly, even before we even start with the grip, because you really learn it for life. We see so many golfers who've played golf for a number of years and really do have very poor motion. And it's very hard then to actually work on it unless you individualize it. In other words, you want to break it down. There's two basic elements, two basic movements, the body movement and the hand, arm and club motion. So today we're really going to discuss this body motion. So Dennis, first of all, I think what we need to make sure is that we have got a good setup, which we've discussed before in a previous program. So just take your address position for me. Right, now we've got good angles here. And the first thing, obviously, what we have to establish, obviously, is the spine angle, the, the angle at your back here, because this angle is the angle that has to remain as you turn back and through. Many golfers, as we see, to have a poor angle to start with so it is necessary to get this right and then from there learning to make a good turning motion back and forward so what we're we talking about in terms of is really learning to use the body very much like say the weight on a piece of string think of it this way if my arm is my body and the string and the weight represent my arms and the club if I keep my body moving this is going to keep the club or in this case the weight in orbit you see, in other words, it will not move out of orbit. As soon as the body stops, you see what happens. So now, that's why it's so important to learn to get the body moving in the right manner. Learn to get that body moving, and you're going to keep the club online and accelerate it as well. Okay, so why don't you just do a little drill that we've done before. Put the club behind your back here, because this is one of our favorite drills here. We stick it right up on our shoulders. And this is an, a drill which you can work on very easily. You simply they place the club up on the back of your neck or in fact on your shoulders and then make a good turning motion here now you can see let's talk about a couple of the key elements in this turn first of all in a good turn you'll see that the shoulders turn at least 90 degrees and the hips about 45 now a lot of this does depend on your suppleness and flexibility but you learn to turn correctly where your left shoulder gets pretty much under your chin and the right hip turns behind you now the chest has moved over his right leg. You see, we see so many players. One of the, the key things we see with many golfers is that we see because they're trying to keep their head still, they get into what we call this reverse pivot situation. They're trying to keep their head so still that the weight never really gets back onto the right side. So it is important to realize that you are allowed to let your head move. You know, we see so many people, they're, they're doing all they can to keep their head still. You know, let me give you an example here, Dennis. Let me just show you the folks at home here. You know, this is the sort of thing that we see. You know, the, the head down syndrome is one of those things that's a cure-all for everything. And you know, we'll, see, we'll see a player doing this type of thing and hitting a bad shot, and then their playing partners would say, hey, you moved your head, you looked up, so keep your head steadier. So you can see where I'm coming from now. The steadier you keep your head, obviously, the less motion you have. So what we want to try to create is a situation where you make your swing and you really learn to turn, even if your head moves a little bit. See, if I put this pencil in my mouth, watch how my head actually rotates. So that allows me to get behind the ball. So you don't want to stay dead still. You want to think in terms of moving very slightly into your right side here. 
So we turn and move into that right side. There's a little bit of a lateral movement in the swing. There's a little movement to the right as we turn, and there's a little bit of movement to the left as we turn. So the hips, in actual fact, don't just turn in a barrel. They move to the right, turn, move to the left, and turn. And we create this turning, coiling motion by winding our torso up to a point where your chest feels over the right leg, the top of the back swing, and then as you unwind, your chest is on top of your left leg as you work through. Then let's hit a shot there so we can just see this. So watch now as he makes the swing, you'll see how his left shoulder gets under his chin. And look at that finish there. You see perfect balance. His right shoulder's towards the target, and Dennis could actually almost walk after it. I'd say one image that always helped me uh, uh, feeling this body motion was getting the picture that the spine is in the back. Right. And it's not in, up in the front. So many people get this idea that they've got to keep the front steady. Right. And they're focusing on keeping the sternum in the same place. And if you, you realize that you've got a thickness of your body about this thick to where your spine is, if you right. could move about that much off the ball, you get a good idea of how much you've got to get off it to keep right. your spine in the same place. Right, so exactly right. So now your spine, you get behind the ball. You see your shirt button. That's a good key. Getting the shirt buttons on top of the right leg. So you really feel like the weight now is in your right side. You should have about 80% of your weight into your right side here. And then certainly as you work through to the finish here now, keep going all the way through now, Dennis. Okay, the weight now is oh, probably 90% his, on his left side. Now while he's doing this, you see the big thing is, okay, take your setup again. The big thing, while he's doing this, what we're trying to do here is to try to maintain this spine angle. So this angle does not want to change too much. So go ahead, Dennis. All right, good. Now back and through. Good. So we can see, sensing, as Dennis says, around his back, around the back of his neck, this area does not want to alter. In making the swing, we want to turn back and through without any distortion of that angle because that's really how the body will work most effectively. Remember, we have to move this at speed. So in order to do that, we want to try to keep those angles constant. You know, it's all about geometry to a certain extent for golf. So we can get those angles right and maintain them throughout. <laughs> Welcome back. Now what we're going to do now is discuss basically the motion, the exactness of the motion, and also how you create that all-important coiling or torquing effect, T-O-R-Q-U-E. Remember that word because that torque is what's going to give you that extra 20 yards and why many people do not hit the ball nearly as far as they should do. So now what we've done for the purpose of illustrating the correct motion, we put two shafts up, just one outside Dennis's right foot, one outside his left foot. Now, it is important to realize that you do have a little bit of motion or a little bit of lateral motion in the swing as we discussed earlier. So Dennis, as you swing back there, I want you to feel almost like you're going to bump into the shaft and then as you complete, you turn away from it. See, the big thing is, do it again now for me. We see so many players, especially better players, who turn too early and twist. And as a result, they get their hips twisted in this direction here and put too much weight in their lower body to the left side. So now, by making this initial movement to the right here and then turning, really you create a situation where you're winding up into the right side. Now, in making the movement forward, Watch how this happens. Dennis's movement is initiated with the left knee, then the left hip, then the left shoulder. It moves forward in such a way that now Dennis moves and then finishes inside the left shaft. So, here we go. Good. Let's do that again, yes? Just put the club behind your back and do this exercise because I think the viewers will see that a little clearer. So we go, we wind it back here. We start to unwind with the left knee. And remember, it's a two-directional motion. This is very important to understand. As you're going back, so your lower body should be starting to unwind forward. You do not want to just get up there and then come down. We see so many players, okay, as, we, as they swing back, they go boop, boop. They go one, two. Now, it's not one, two. It's one and. Now the and is where the lower body starts to unwind. And two. And that's how you really create a lot of speed. You find many, many good players, they'll they'll actually feel their upper body is really hitting the golf ball. This is because the lower body is in a position where as it starts to unwind, now they're in a position where their right side can really start to release. So remember the golf swing is a two-sided affair. The left side winds up as it goes back, the left side starts to move, and then the right side really releases. So you see many players actually feel as they swing through that their right side is in, 
in control of the hit. That's what you feel a lot of times too. Isn't yeah, it? I, you know, my favorite feeling is when I feel the power really coming out of my right leg. I feel the muscles in my right leg really exploding onto the ball, and that's when I hit it my best. Yeah, it's there's all sorts of terms that the players use. It's called covering the ball or trapping the ball. But what it basically means is the right side. If you look at a pitcher or somebody throwing a ball as they move through here, the right side is really starting to release through the shot there. Now you need to do that if you want to hit the golf ball a long way. You see so many people are worried about hitting the ball to the left, they say, oh well, too much right side, too much right hand. Well basically, if you're in the right position, your right side can work as hard as you like, correct? Yeah, and that's the, that's the feeling I'm always looking for, David. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, now Ben Hogan always used to say he wished he had three right hands. And I think what he really meant was three right sides because he could really pour the power on because he, he was in position to really hit the golf ball. We see a lot of players who get this big slide going, going this way, or we see conversely, which is probably worse, we see a lot of high handicap players who sway going this way and they have to transfer their weight. Remember, it's a turning weight transfer. Very important to understand it. It's a turning weight transfer. Now, I think the other thing we need to really discuss here, Dennis, is let me remove these shafts here before you do yourself an injury. <laughs> right? Thank you. <laughs> the other thing I think we need to discuss is the way that the shoulders actually move in the swing. This is very important. So let's just, once you grab the, the broom handle, okay, put you to work here. Right, now, the key being, and we've mentioned the spine angle before, but what we're trying to do here really, having set up to it, is turn the shoulders at 90 degrees to the spine angle. We do not want to simply tilt the shoulders this way. We see a lot of players who feel, hey, they want to get their left shoulder pointing at the ball. Now that's far too much tilt there, too steep a movement there, which doesn't allow you to wind up. On the other hand, you don't want to turn so level that everything comes off the ball in this position because you also you lose your torque or your coil. So just get that picture that as you swing back, your shoulders turn at 90 degrees, and as you swing through, or turn 90 degrees to the spine angle, I should say, and as you turn through, they do the same thing through here, right? So turning back and through on that same line, on that same axis, will help to maintain the spine angle and also create the consistency that one's looking for. So keep going here. Good, that's great. So certainly the shoulders turn relatively flat, relatively flat. The arm swing, generally speaking, is gonna be a little steeper or a little more upright, but you wanna make sure whatever you do, you don't just tilt down. You must turn back, and a good feeling is to turn your right shoulder behind you on the back swing, and as you swing through, turn your left shoulder out of the way as you follow through. So you can see as, he, as Dennis swings back, good little exercise this, left shoulder goes under the chin, as he follows through, the right shoulder goes under the chin. Now that's a very simple thought to get the feeling of a good shoulder turn back and through. Good, all right? Yeah, I say, David, it's one thing you've always emphasized and you can't do it enough is to keep making this motion until you get it right. Right, it's, it, you know, if you could do these little drills, I'll tell you, you'd be amazed how consistent you'll start to get because the whole idea is not to go out and think about all these things, it's to make it natural. And the way you can make it natural, or create muscle memories, we term it, is just by going it over and over and over it again. So a simple little exercise like this with the club or broom handle in front of you or the club behind your back will really give you the sensation of what your body should be doing and then you can get out and hit golf balls without having to really worry about it. Here we are at beautiful Lake Nona on a somewhat windy day but however what I would suggest that you don't do right now is go and have dinner because in this section you're going to learn how to hit it a little further and that's what everybody wants to do. Right Dennis? Yeah me included. Right. <laughs> Straight but longer. All right as they say the woods are full of long hitters so we want to try to get it down the middle of the fairway here. All right, now Dennis, if you would just take your setup for me and uh, let's talk a little bit about this resistance factor. One of the key areas of resistance is this right knee. As you swing back, the important thing is, I'm going to hold Dennis's knee here. Okay, go back there, Dennis. Right, you can see it can rotate slightly, but you must sit on that right leg. You want to feel those quad muscles really tightening. Any sort of straightening of this right leg like this or wobbling out to the right of that foot is going to lose that resistance. So this is one of the key areas it must really focus on. You feel the weight really being built up inside that right heel, inside the right ankle. And you should sense, to say, a, a greater proportion of your weight certainly on that right side. So you feel really wound up. Now let's do that once more, Dennis. Now as you turn back here, 
you definitely want to feel a, a sensation of winding up these big back muscles. Where do you feel a little torsion there, Dennis? Oh, yeah, right, right in the middle of the back there. In the middle of the back down here? Yeah. Here and here, those are the two areas, aren't they, really? Yeah, I feel those quads nice and solid. Right, now, that is an air thing that you really want to practice. This area right here, swing it back, the back, at the, the base of the spine, and this right thigh. I really can't overemphasize how important that is in order to wind up. So let's do that once more there. In fact, let's do a little drill here. Get your left foot off the ground, so your left heel is off the ground here, Dennis. Okay? Now, now just maintain it there, because it's not necessary to lift your left heel. I'll explain that in a second. But as long as you maintain it there, you can really feel the emphasis on that leg, can't you? Yeah. Okay, so... Feet. All right, do that again. Once more. So keep the heel off the ground and just maintain that position as you swing back. Good. So this will give you that feeling that we're looking for right here. Now, okay, relax. Creating so much torque there, it looks like it's hurting. Okay. <laughs> right, now, a lot of people ask me, do you have to raise your left heel off the ground? Well, a lot of it depends on flexibility. What I, my answer is, my pat answer is, if your heel lifts as a result of the turn, that's fine. What we see a lot of players do, unfortunately, though, is just simply lift that left heel almost in the very, at the very start of the golf swing, and that obviously allows one to lose one's resistance. Keeping the left heel down, certainly for as long as possible anyway, creates maximum resistance. Remember, to a large extent, you're really winding your upper body against your lower body. So we don't want the hips moving at the same rate as the upper torso. This lower body has to resist. That's why that right knee is such a big key. In fact, I've got a little uh, teaching aid right here. Here we go, Dennis. Oh, the dreaded beach ball. The dreaded beach ball. There <laughs> we go. Right, let's just put that between your knees there. Okay, there we go. All right. Look like you're laying an egg there. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now just swing it back. Now, this is a great exercise to actually feel the resistance in the knees. Now, in actual fact, the gap between your knees shouldn't get that much narrower at the top of the swing. Certainly, if you've got any degree of flexibility, you want to sense that the gap pretty much stays the same, and that's really what the beach ball does. You can squeeze it a little bit, obviously, so the gap might fraction, fractionally narrow, but, or get a little narrow, but for the most part, it just basically retains that same width there as you wind up. Right, let's do that again a couple of times, Dennis. It's not the easiest thing to hit balls doing, but it's a great feeling for the lower body stabilization. It really gives you the feeling of the lower body being wound up. All right, Dennis, let me just uh, remove the ball here. Pass out of the Beach Ball Academy. Golf Channel Academy, brought to you by Callaway Golf. And their All right, I'd like to offer a big welcome to Ernie Els, the 1994 US Open champion. So, how are you doing, Ernie? All right? Yeah, thanks a lot, David. I'm doing fine, working at it a little bit. Good, good. Well, great to see you. And, uh, you know, we're talking a lot about people's body movement today. And I know, you know, we've worked on a couple of things with your body movement. You know, being tall, sometimes your legs get a little active. And, uh, you know, I know you've worked hard at it. Yeah, David, as you say, I've had a bit of problems with my leg action. Um, you know, I had to slow it down a little bit. You know, as, as tall players, a lot of tall players do, you, you know, you, you don't really use your upper body going back. You just pick up the club, you get right. up very steep, and uh, you don't give yourself any time to, to get down and hit the ball. Right. And, uh, you know, as you know, we've, we've worked hard on that in the last couple of years. And, uh, you know, it's, it's very important in the golf swing, you know. Legs is not everything in the golf swing. Right, because your balance is the big thing. Because, I mean, I remember you used to have a little bit of a reverse pivot, and you're, when things get a little bad, your posture gets bad, and your sort of legs tend to sag a little bit there. Exactly, you know. I had to try and keep myself tall. Right. And, uh, and really just try and uh, bring back the club with more of my, my arms and my upper body. And, uh, you know, as you say, you know, being tall, yeah. You know, you want to get down there and uh, sometimes, I, as you say, sag and uh, get, uh, you know, squashed. Get a little squashed down yeah, there. And your legs sort of slide a little bit at times and you're making a much, you can see now, the last couple of years, your body's starting to turn more rather than slide and I think it's seen, you're know, seeing a lot more in your consistency now. Exactly, you know, my bad shots aren't uh, all that bad anymore. Yeah, you know? that's for sure. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> um, you know, uh, you got to, you know, as, as you say, when the legs do go, you know, too quickly, the ball's going to go either right or you're going to really throw the club at the ball and it might go left. Right. And, um, yeah. So your you body know, really is controlling your, your golf swing, really. Once you've, you know, once you've set up well, good turn back, good turn through, and it's like the hands and arms will take care of themselves. Exactly. You know, you give yourself so much more time to hit the ball, actually. Uh, yeah. You know, there's no more rush from the, from the top of your backswing. 
to, to actually hit the ball. Right. And um, you know, you know, the backswing is the same as the follow through. You know, you just got to turn back and try and turn through the ball and keep you know? it simple. And just try and keep it simple. Yeah. Right. Well, you know, Ernie's obviously is known for having such a majestic looking swing, but he hits the ball so fast. So you're going to watch him now hit a few shots here, and you'll see how. His body turns back and through with very little effort and all the speed is right through impact. So I'll go ahead and hit a couple there, Ernie. Okay. you notice how smooth the swing looks. It's really, there's no real effort to jump off it as he changes direction. That's a big key. I want you to watch how smoothly he changes direction. As he's winding up, watch how he really unwinds with his lower body. Making it look easier, Ernie. <laughs> well, you know, you just got to try and uh, keep your upper body moving back behind the ball, and I uh, just try and keep those legs a little, little quiet, especially in my golf swing. Well, I tell you what, there's a golf swing that's going to last for many, many years. You can see Ernie is blessed with a lot of flexibility, but he hits the ball a long, long way with very little effort. So. Bernie, I know you're going to win a lot of majors in the future there, so uh, you're swinging great. And listen, thanks a lot for joining us today. Thanks a lot, David. And thanks for having me and be, being on your show. Okay, well, there you have it. Learn to use your body correctly. You're going to get a lot more power. And hey, you never know, you might look like Ernie else.